Welcome to the Dog in a Pub podcast, where I share thoughts, stories, and conversations about my life and my journey post-suicide attempt. I'd like to begin with a this episode, we're going to talk about the word why, uh, Dog in a Pub origin story, one of my favorite bars, the Brickstore Pub in Decatur, Georgia, and a story about how a flat tire changed my life. So pull up a stool and let's see if we can change the world. The word why has caused me trouble all my life. And the reason it does that is I get stuck in it. Uh, when something happens, I try to figure out why it happened. You know, why did this happen? And I'll just stay in that spot. And if I can't figure out why, you know, um, when my wife left me, it was, why did she leave me? I, I, I assumed it was, I was a bad person, a bad husband, a uh, bad human. And all the why I did was point back at me. And I, I've just found excuses why I was bad and why I was a bad person. And why seemed to always be my fault. And my ego always took the why to be Doug. Um, this thing happened because Doug. And that encompasses, you know, all that made me up. So Doug is bad is what most of the whys pointed to. And to put why into perspective, um, you know, I did figure out why my wife left me, and it's because neither one of us were happy. Uh, we had been roommates for a very long time. You know, she's just the first one to throw in the towel. I had been thinking about it for a while. Um, I just never got up the gumption to do it. So I really can't blame her and, and the why, um, because she wanted to be happy. Once I figured out that that was the why, and the why wasn't that I was bad, I was a bad husband, I, I wasn't the best husband, I wasn't the best father, but those weren't the why. Um, the real why was she wanted to be happy. And once I figured out that why, uh, I was really happy for her. I mean, I love my wife very much, um, <laughs> my ex-wife very much. Her and her boyfriend have spent Thanksgiving with us uh, as a family, and it was great. It was awesome. Um that why that I was stuck on, the why that drove me to to make the attempt on my life, uh, was the thing that was irrational. So when you when you start thinking about why things happen, a lot of people say everything happens for a reason. Uh, I think everything happens. Sometimes there is no reason. Uh, things just happen. That's just where the world and life and everything just kind of moved the needle, and that's where it wound up happening. You know, I. Um, like a row, a row of dominoes, um, things just happen, and then you you wind up with the results that ha occur. But yeah, why is it a very dangerous word? It can it can be quicksand and take you down to that rabbit hole of you know self doubt and just really beating yourself up and blaming yourself for everything. So when something happens and you start getting stuck in that why, think about. If I know the reason, if I know why this thing happened, how will that change my environment, my life, my reaction to it? And you'll find that in many cases, the why becomes somewhat irrelevant. It's good to know. It might be good information. But in a lot of cases, at least from my point of view, the why is just kind of something good to know. And it doesn't really move you forward. Because the why has already happened. Um, you can look at the why and go, oh, that happened because of X, so now I'll try not to do X. And there are times when the why uh, might not be a good thing to know. When something happens and I'm looking to answer that why question, I always step back first and go, okay, if I know why this happened, what is that going to do for me? Is it going to help me be a better person? Is it going to cause stress and anxiety or anger? Um, can I live with not knowing why? And for the most part, I've become to the point where since it's already happened and it's in the past, uh, unless it's something tragic or horrible um, or something that seemed to be preventable, I really don't worry about the why anymore. Um, unless it's, I can use that why for a growth point, if I can learn from that why. So I always think about that. This happened. Can I learn from it? Then the why is important. So that's the word for today is the word why. Uh, just think about it. When you start getting stuck on it, think about why you're stuck on it. What's important about that why? And is it a growth opportunity or is it just something that's going to stick you in the sand?
Dog in a Pub and Origin Story. I thought I should talk about the Dog in a Pub and where that all came from and and kind of go with that. So I was born in 1966 on November 21st. My mom apparently had a few extra margaritas around Valentine's Day, and I was the accident, youngest of four children. I have a sister that's, oh, I think I've gone back way too far. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, I rubbed a girl's feet at a party, I think, because memories lie, but I'm pretty sure I did. And then I met her sister, who convinced me to buy my first kilt. And uh, Brett, my current partner, also said I should get a kilt. So then I started wearing kilts. Um, online, I found a guy named Rick Baldwin, who was the year in the, year in the kilt guy. When he turned 50, he decided to kind of stir up his life and change things up. And decided to wear a kilt every day for a year. And I found him online, and we became friends and started chatting and uh, he was doing a podcast called the uh, Life in a Kilt podcast because after the year he changed it to life. So he's doing a Life in a Kilt podcast and I travel North America for work and I was going to be in Atlanta to uh, hang out with him. And I said, hey, you know, I'm coming down. And so we got together at a bar down there called Mac McGee's and recorded a podcast live there and you can find it. I'll try to find the link and link to that original podcast and that doing that podcast is actually one of the things that led me to doing this right now. But after that, they started calling me Doug in a Pub as a nickname. Uh, and I ran with it because you know, I spent a lot of time in pubs. And my name's Doug, so it makes sense. So as a joke, I made a Doug in a Pub Facebook page because I thought it'd be funny. And then I started a blog and started to talk about bars and drinks and uh, breweries and things. And then at the same time, I started another page called Pebble in a Pool. So Doug in a Pub was going to be my, you know, quote unquote brand for, you know, drinking and bars and fun, funny stuff. And then Pebble in a Pool is going to be the serious side where I talk about, you know, suicide and word choice and life and, and things. But as I started to look at it, I'm kind of a barstool philosopher because when I meet people in bars, what do I wind up talking about? We wind up talking about our lives, our kids, our families, our jobs, where we've been in life, where we're going. I've had some of the most amazing conversations in bars. So that's why I recently combined both of my blogs into Doug in a Pub because I spent a lot of time in bars having really amazing conversations with people about everything from, and this is bartenders and other patrons and just, you want to find out where America is? You go to a small towny bar and you hang out there for a few days. I have learned so much at the local bar here um, in, in Deerfield where I live. Uh, just watching the people there. I mean, this is, you know, this is America. Uh, but so that's where Doug in a Pub came from. Uh, I was on a podcast that some friends of mine run because I started wearing kilts. I was on that podcast and they gave me the nickname Doug in a Pub. And so that's what Doug in a Pub is. And that's where it came from. As I've mentioned, I have the opportunity to travel North America for work and sales. So when I do that, I'm always looking for craft breweries I can go to, uh, unique bars or places I can go to. And now I do always Uber or Lyft. I don't drink and drive when I'm on the road for work. Um, not that I drink and drive when I'm not on the road for work. But when I'm on the road for work, I'm, I always try to look for places that uh, seem interesting. So I was in Atlanta for work. I think I was flying in or flying out. And my hotel was walking distance from this place called the Brickstore Pub. And I looked at their menu and they seemed to be a Belgian bar, really focused heavily on Belgians. So I walked over and they have a beer book um, where they sell their beers and it's phenomenal. Uh, the beers that they sell are, are just really impressive. So some of the beers I've had at Brickstore Pub... Um, and one of the reasons I like them so much, you know, aside from the amazing selection of Belgians they have, is they sell our beers. And I think the oldest beer I've had there was a, um, a Paradox Glen Grant by Brewdog. It was a 2008, and it was absolutely spectacular. Uh, just a really amazing beer. Uh, I've had a Paradox Glen Moray from 2008 at Brewdog, from Brewdog uh, which is also really good. But I think the oldest beer I've had, uh, it was a red and white from 2007 from Dogfish Head. 
and truly these I don't know of any other bar that has so many beers of so many vintages of so many varieties that you can just go in there and you get to try these amazing beers uh, from time to time they have a cellar flight so you go in there and they'll pick four beers out of the cellar they'll open up the bottles and you get a flight a little bit of each of these four beers um, the owners were actually knighted in Belgium because they import so much Belgian beer. Uh, they have the biggest bottle of dragon's milk I've ever seen. I think it's like $180. It's like a triple magnum. Um, they have these giant bottles of Orval. And upstairs on the second floor is where they have their Belgian bar. They normally have, I think it's eight or ten tap lines that are only Belgian beers. And that's open and on evenings only. That's not open during the day. The owners are amazing. I've talked to Dave a couple times. Uh, I know that one of the bartenders is actually from Wisconsin. So whenever I go, she's like, hey, Wisconsin guy. And for a bar that is almost 12 hours drive, I've actually been there 10 times uh, to tell you how much I like it and how much I think that bar is worth a road trip. Uh, that's a place I, I have to get the misses at some point because uh, the beers are just phenomenal and the staff is really knowledgeable. And then the food the, they have these brown butter and sage pierogies for an app that are tremendous. They are just, uh, and they have candied walnuts in them. Oh, yeah, that stuff. Um, when I go, I, I always have that, and then I, I start digging through their beer list. Um, bad news is, I think I've taken care of most of their Brewdog stash, and I've also taken care of most of their Energan stash. The, the Santa Claus, I believe you pronounce it. I started after Oldest, and I've been working my way forward on both of those beers. Uh, but, you know, they have a lot of bottles for sharing. They have, you know, 750s. And some of these, you know, be 60 bucks for a bottle or 40 bucks. But truly one of the most impressive beer lists you'll ever see. Uh, they only have downstairs, I'm thinking it's 12 tap heads. But then, yeah, the cellar is why I go there. I mean, they have amazing beers on tap. They always have a lot of good Belgians. They have some good local beers. And then their cellar list is, is the thing. And they also have a lot of really good whiskeys and scotches behind the bar. Um, but the staff is great. The food is amazing. These are guys that started, the, the, the trio of, of gentlemen that started it, who really love beer. And they've done a great job curating really good beers, bringing them together, serving them the right way and just creating a great environment to uh, enjoy good beers and and hang out with friends. So whenever I'm in Atlanta, I always, either on the night in or the night out, I always go to the Brickstore Pub because it's phenomenal. Um, truly one of the best bars I've ever been to. So that's uh, Brickstore Pub, a review. So here's the story of how a flat tire changed my life and changed me. So um, way back, right after, after my marriage ended, um, yes, I'm going gonna, gonna to reference that a lot, aren't I? Um, but it was a demarcation point for me, so of course. So I was still living at home most of the time, and we used to go to a farm to get milk. Uh, so I would we'd wash our big gallon jugs, and I'd take them to the farm, and I'd bring it right out of the tank that they fill with milk. So... Milk, 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 milk. So um, I was on my way out there, look which I did, because it was either every other Saturday or Sunday, because it, it changed. It was every other day. So I was either on a Saturday or Sunday. So I'm driving out, and I was running late that morning. Normally I try to go first thing and listen to NPR on the way. But I was running late, so there's a gas station on the way that I always stopped at. I think it's on Highway 83, and I can't remember where it is. But anyhow... I was there late, which was weird. I fill up with gas and I go inside, which I, I didn't do all the time, but I was going to get breakfast, uh, you know, healthy donuts and plastic thing of milk. So I'm inside, I hear this noise, and it sounds like this grinding noise. And I'm looking and I'm looking, and this woman pulls into the parking lot, pulls right up to the front of the store, and she's got a flat tire. And I'm like, oh. Well, I, I said, do you need some help? She goes, oh, yeah, my tire's flat. So I went, oh, okay. So, well, you know, I can help you with that. I, you know, I have time. I can do that. So she opens up the back of her car, and she's got like these, it was like five or six um, 
bags of softener salt at 50 pounds a piece. So I pull all those out and I'm stacking them on the ground and I'm digging for her spare tire and her jack and I'm grabbing everything and you know, I've got the salt out and I've got the tire out and I've got the jack and I start jacking up the car and she starts talking to me about the day um, and she's kind of crying and I'm like, you know, what's wrong? You know, it's, I'll get this fixed, you know. It was the one year anniversary of her husband's death and somebody earlier had given her a bouquet of flowers, just complete stranger gave her a bouquet of flowers. And then here it is a little while later, and a complete stranger is helping her change a tire in a parking lot. So I'm crying, and she's crying, and I'm changing her tire, and I get her tire on and um, put it back in and put the jack away, put all the salt back in. And um, she asked if she could give me a hug, and she gave me a hug, and um, she thanked me. And she said, you know, I, I think about my, my late husband all the time, and I always wonder if he's with me. And she looked at me and she said, because of this, you helping me the way you have, I know he's with me right now. And wow, yeah, I just, I was crying. And she got in the car and I left and I went and I left. And I was just, I was so moved and blown away by the, the chance occurrence of me being at absolute right spot at the absolute right time to help this woman on an absolutely tragic day in her life. The thing that that really taught me, the way that that really changed my life was, now I make it a point to look for those moments. I keep my eyes open. You know, does somebody need a tire change? Does somebody need help carrying groceries? Um, we were in London four years ago to see a Kate Bush concert. You know, we're just walking through the tube, and I don't know how the tube works. I'd love to see a 3D map. But again, it was... There was a woman who was struggling up and down the stairs with a suitcase. So I asked her if I could help me. She gave me, she kind of pulled back and gave me a look like, oh, some weird guy in a kilt's going to steal my suitcase. And then she saw I was with, with Brett. So I was with somebody else. You know, it was, it was me and, and a woman. Um, and I think that helped her relax. And I said, can I help you carry that? She said, sure. So we're going up the stairs and down the stairs. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know I was helping a brick salesman. So yeah, I just... It's just one of those things that running into that woman in that parking lot taught me to always look for those opportunities to help somebody. They're there. They might be small. They might be big. But keep your eyes open. There's an opportunity to help. And remember, if you're ever struggling, there might be someone out there watching to give you a hand. On the next episode of Doug in a Pub, I'm going to have a conversation with Brett about need and want. Uh, it's one of the first things we talked about when we started dating, and it's a, a very important topic. I'm going to talk about BrewDog, my favorite brewery, and uh, why I enjoy being part of that community. And then I will talk about something else, which will be a surprise to both of us. Both. Or all. All of us. Yeah, let's do that. It'll be a surprise to all of us. Thanks for listening, and hopefully you'll tune in and share this, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.